Welcome back. So I'm going to do some cutting uh, in this little film and what I'm working on is the first cutting into this stormy block and if you remember from my previous film I actually already printed some white onto this grey paper and as I said in that film the white when you ink up the, some of the grey shows through it so it's not a perfect white so effectively I've got kind of a pale grey here so what I want to do on this layer of cutting is to cut here it's not so much that there's a sun it's that there's a break in the cloud and there's a bit of light coming through so I've got light coming from this area here and also I want this this grayer white to do some of the darker areas of the snow in the foreground and then I'll put another layer of white on that snow to make the remaining lino print an even brighter white so I'm going to play with the contrast there so cutting here I've got my sloping board so I'm on a bit of a slope towards me because I find that's a lot easier for my back cutting like that normally it would be on a much uh, higher slope for me to cut but because we're filming it's on a bit of a a lower slope. So I've got a rug underlay matting here to stop everything sliding about and I've got my trusty sight light um, from the the builders suppliers for bright raking light because what I'm cutting it's quite fiddly and also the other thing about painting is it's really really easy to, to paint on the lino but then you have to decide where to cut. So you're translating what is a very nuanced and soft way of working into a, a graphic binary cut, not cut uh, medium. So I, I'm having to think a bit about that. And the last thing I'm going to uh, pop on are these um, magnifying glasses here that just sit over my glasses. These are made by Optivisor. There are quite a lot on the market of all sorts of price points. These are about 50 pounds, I think, but I have a set that cost me 13 quid, which is pretty good too. So, you know, magnifying eyewear, really good. If like me, your eyes aren't totally brilliant anymore. So I'm going for my trusty one millimeter V gouge here. And I'm just going to start working and I'm just I'm working with the paint strokes and I've drawn also a little in uh, graphite to give me a few lines in there because I'd like there to be not just brush marks I want there to be some drawn line so I'm just going to cut where I can see there's just white it's a little bit tricky because normally I'd be working on this pink stained liner. You can see a little bit of the pink there, um, but that's not apparent once you've painted on it. So I'm having to do this a little bit blind because I can't see the contrast as well. So when I want to check how I'm getting on, what I'm doing is I'm using uh, newsprint here, nice soft thin paper and a graphite stick and that means I can take a rubbing and just check how I'm getting on. I mean at the moment it's only tiny little things showing but it gives me a feeling of how my cutting's going and whether I'm on the right track.
and you see how I keep moving everything around. That's why I'm a big fan of cutting mats rather than bench hooks, because I'm forever turning stuff around and all that. The ease of just having a non-slip mat. So these little prints, apart from I hope people will buy them, um, I am also learning a lot working in this way where I've, I've painted direct to the lino and haven't started out with a drawing at all. Um, as you might know, I'm at the moment writing a book on lino cut and working in the reduction print method so it's it's quite nice to, to be quite experimental at the moment um, and push a few techniques myself because it's helping me think about the book and it's helping me to make interesting work to make films for you guys so it's a sort of win-win really But I always enjoy working at the point where I'm not quite sure how I'm going to achieve things. So I always feel that's a kind of very healthy state. If I don't quite know when I start how it's going to end, I always think that that's, that's a very positive thing. Um, I think it's quite good to be on your toes. Especially with the added pressure of trying to film as well. <laughs> I'm just going to take this bigger area out and because it's a larger area I'm going to cut deeper into the lino. So as a rule of thumb the more uh, lino that you're taking out the deeper it needs to be. When it's fine little areas you don't need to go as deep but to clear out a large area you need to cut down a bit deeper. So let me take a rubbing and show you what I've been up to. So I'm gradually 
building up this kind of halo of light here and I might take a bit more out here as I go. I'll just see how it goes and how it looks until I'm happy with that. I've got quite a lot of cutting still to do here and I'm going to plough on with that and then show you how I'm going to attack the rest of the sky to give it a kind of bruised stormy feeling before I get the clouds in. So thank you very much for joining me and I hope you'll be joining me again as I continue to work on these four little prints.